For more on the Fed's inflation fight and rate path and ahead uh, for the new inflation data we're going to get this week, I want to bring in former Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren. Uh, I don't know if you had an opportunity to hear all the things that Steve was, was talking about, but uh, I don't know if you want to, want to comment on that first. Uh, so I agree with what Steve was saying, that uh, by and large, as long as the unemployment rate doesn't rise, you don't have a really significant problem. But uh, I would highlight for lower income individuals, uh, many of whom have bought uh, newer used cars at relatively high rates, there is stress on those individuals. And so credit card delinquencies and auto delinquencies are two of the larger bills that a lot of low income households have to pay. So uh, frequently it takes an unemployment increase to have significant problems. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a sign that even at 3.9 percent unemployment, we're starting to see delinquencies for lower income core titles. When you think about uh, changing the path, well, well, let's start with this. What is your expectation for the rest of the year at this point in the ballgame? For inflation? Yep. Inflation and also, you know, Fed cuts or Fed hikes even. Uh, starting with inflation, so I think the general trend is down. What's a little bit uncertain is how quickly that trend will be reestablished. So one of the concerns that we've had over the last three months has been that both the CPI and the PCE uh, core levels have been leveling off. So in order to get the Fed to actually ease this year, we need to see that trend going down. So the Fed tends to focus on core PCE. Uh, that's at 2.8 percent. I do expect by the end of the year that it's likely to be closer to 2.5 percent. Uh, but when that trend starts reestablishing itself and starting to go down, and when we're talking about tenths of a percent, small changes in uh, various components can mean that it's delayed before that trend is reestablished. So I am expecting that trend to reestablish a, a slow decline in inflation, uh, first towards 2.5% this year and towards 2% next year. That would be consistent with one to two uh, 25 basis point easings, depending on when the, there's enough data that the trend towards lower inflation shows up. Do you think, I mean, we talked to Roger Altman, uh, who was just here earlier, he talked about potentially using in September. You know, we always say that it gets complicated near, near an election. Do you think it gets complicated near an election, knowing what you know? I think that there's uncertainty around any election, and that's true about this election. Um, it looks like it's going to be a close election, and uh, they're going to be following presumably pretty different uh, economic policies. So uncertainty is not particularly good for the economy. People delay decisions until they have more certainty about what the election outcome is going to be. So it wouldn't surprise me if we see some slowing uh, in the second half of the year. To the extent that we have slowing and the inflation trends down, I think the Fed at that point would think it was appropriate to uh, lower right. interest rates. So that's interesting, though. If, if, if we sort of take take it uh, at face value that right ahead of an election, things slow down generally. Is that considered when the, the Fed thinks about this, saying to themselves, well, actually, maybe things are going to pick up in a couple months, two or three months, and so there's actually nothing, we're, there's nothing we need to do artificially? So uh, different. Uh, if the election's not close, there's not much of an impact of an election on economic data. If the election's close and people are and the two candidates or three candidates in this case potentially are, are following very different policies, uh, that uncertainty actually could slow down the economy a bit as we get into the second half of the year as people wait to see what the outcome of the election is going to be. So it doesn't occur around all elections. It occurs around close elections where the policies are likely to be quite different. Are you surprised at just the, the strength of the job market thus far? We were also talking to Roger Altman. He was saying he was at the White House last week. And one of the things that came up in the conversation with President Biden by uh, so many of the CEOs was this idea that they can't find enough people. Yeah, the U.S. economy has been very resilient. Uh, I think that actually the fiscal policy actions of this administration are part of the reason. So normally at this point in the cycle, we would have expected, for example, construction jobs to slow down. And that's because both interest rates are high and commercial real estate is troubled. The reason we haven't actually seen that is because um, 
for many of these construction jobs, they've been helped by the fiscal policies. So the CHIP Acts mean that there's been a lot of manufacturing construction as we're building new chip factories around uh, the country, in part to, to bring uh, some of those activities from abroad into the United States. There have been actions for green energy. That has meant that there's been more spending on those kinds of uh, projects. And highway projects have been uh, way up, in part because of the infrastructure bill. So some of the fiscal policies are direct government transfers, but many of the government policies work through the private sector, and that's what we're seeing in some of the construction data. So I think one reason we haven't seen it in construction is that uh, the fiscal policies have been promoting a fair amount of construction, and that's likely to continue through this year.